In a previous video, I managed to transfer data between Arduinos using some custom antennas I built. I also tested this sensitive Doppler effect radar. You will see what all of this is for in the first place, and we will be putting this all together in this video. There's a lot to cover, so grab your snack and enjoy. So the thing I'm building is supposed to collect data about humidity, movement and temperature, as well as be completely self-sufficient, meaning it powers itself and doesn't require any maintenance at all. Apart from that, it needs to withstand harsh conditions such as humidity and dust, and all of the sensors will have to work together in one package. My goal with this project is to learn as much as possible and just build an IoT device along the way. This is the HB100 radar. I'll be using it for movement detection. I already talked about it a lot in a previous video, so let's continue. This is the AM2320. It's a temperature and humidity sensor in one that communicates with the Arduino over the I2C or I2C protocol, whatever you want to call it. Except for communication over Wi-Fi, I will also implement radio communication. For that, I will use a super cheap transmitter called the FS1000A. Now that's a lot of requirements and complexity for a single project. I will hope I'll be able to deliver on it. <laughs> Oh, did I mention it also has to send data over Wi-Fi to be stored on a AWS server? Yeah, it, it has to. Before I continue, I always see too many people not wearing gloves or eye protection during soldering. Remember that your skin can easily absorb lead from the soldering wire. Lead is highly toxic and it deposits in your body for a long time. Okay, back on subject. For the casing, my dad came to the rescue and gave me a weird old plastic box he said he doesn't need. Inside I found a really big capacitor that was fortunately discharged and also there's a really cool red switch that I plan to use. After disassembling it, it had enough space to fit all of the components. I also took the time to clean it. To connect all of the sensors together, I designed a custom PCB to interface between them and the Arduino. It really took a long time, you know. But I learned so much and I think it was worth it, especially I love working with KiCad now. I also love working with today's sponsor. PCBWay has been providing services in the field of PCB manufacturing and assembly since its founding in 2014. This means that they are now celebrating their 10th anniversary. Use the link in the description to register and redeem free prizes and coupons. I personally got an ESP32 Nano coupon. They have a simple, reliable user interface that lets you order PCBs easily. My experience with them has been very smooth, so I can honestly recommend their PCB service. After receiving the package, I checked if everything is fine with the boards and I started the assembly process. I started off with the main components such as the sensors and attached some wires to them. Then I soldered all of the through hole components such as the resistors, capacitors, amplifiers and so on to the board. And finally I connected all of the wires from the sensors to the board and let me tell you I made a little small mistake. The mounting points for the wires were super tiny so I had to be really precise but after checking for any short circuits with my multimeter I saw that everything was fine. After I was finished I was left with this beautiful mess of wires. Perhaps I could have avoided that by mounting the sensors directly into the PCB. However, I didn't do that because I didn't think about it. Uh, actually, I also wanted to have the ability to position all of the sensors in the case a little bit more freely. The humidity sensor, for example, has to have access to fresh air, so it has to be mounted somewhere near a hole. On the other hand, the radar has to be pointing one specific direction, so also it has to be mounted accordingly. Of course, I could have just planned all of this using a CAD program, but that would take ages. Additionally, as a safety feature, I decided to wrap the step-up converter into a plastic bag. This is how you waterproof electronics. This advanced technique also prevents any short circuits occurring between the main board and the step-up converter. Now it's time for the part where most of you viewers click off because you consider it boring or not interesting or nerdy. We're going to talk about how I programmed all of this. Okay, first the radar. It works by checking if the analog pin has a voltage higher than 3,77 volts and if it is higher it means we have successfully detected a human. Then there is the humidity and temperature sensor and for that I just use the Adafruit library. In my opinion the most complicated code is on the Arduino R4 which acts basically like a bridge. It receives encoded strings of data from the sensor and then sends them over Wi-Fi to the AWS server I mentioned before. 
The most complicated for me was by far learning to make an HTTP request to a server from an Arduino. Thankfully, you don't have to figure it out by yourself because you can just go to my GitHub repository, which you can also start and copy the code if you want. Now that everything is working smoothly, the messages are being received and the data is being stored in the database, it seems like the project is complete. Or is it? What about the power system? Oh yeah, of course, I almost forgot. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> for that, I was planning to use solar panels and a voltage stabilizer to keep the voltage at 5 volts to charge a power bank that would have the ability to be both charged and discharged at the same time. This is called pass-through charging. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a small power bank that would fit in the case and would work like that. So I decided to modify the project requirements a little bit and I just slapped a big power bank on top. This should keep the system working for long hours. Amazing. This is some peak consumer electronics design. I hope you got some value from this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Please help me out by liking, subscribing and commenting and see you in the next one.